Uh, first and foremost, want to say thank you so much for how allowing me to be on here. And I want to praise God for giving us the fellowship that we have, whatever brother to have his understanding of his word. And, and uh, it's a blessing just to be able to uh, share the truth with people uh, right now. And it's just uh, that that right there is just a priceless gift right now that, that both of us have been given. And I, I can't be more grateful and thankful for that, man. All the glory belongs to him. So. You know, today, brothers and sisters, you know, just yeah. like me and Brother Owens just talked about, it's about, you know, having this understanding that we have to uh, discern the times, but in, in all reality, not going on vacation while the Most High God is doing his business on this earth right now at this present moment. You know, a lot of us say, well, I'm going to go on vacation. I'm going to go enjoy my life. I'm going to go put in my two weeks. I'm going to just kick back and put my feet up and I'm going to enjoy the suns and have my feet in the sand. But I really truly believe a lot of us, not a lot of us, all of us truly do not need to be having our feet in the sand. And we need to have our foot and our hands to the plow and doing as much work as possible for the kingdom. So, Amen. brother, if you have, uh, you know, if you want to give them a little short testimony Amen. on who you are and why you're on fire the way that you are and why you do the things that you do. Oh, I would greatly appreciate that so the audience can exactly know who they're listening to. Yes, yes. Uh, first and foremost, my name is Charles Owen. I'm 36. Yes, yes. Uh, first and foremost, my name is Charles Owen. I'm 36. I live here in Maryland. Uh, I've been saved. As I say saved, I say the word enlightened uh, by the Father uh, for five years now. Uh, just following the word, just walking in the word, Luke 9, 23, taking on my cross and following after him, Matthew 6, 33, seeking his kingdom and all his righteousness be added unto me. Uh, first Corinthians 6, 20 for ye, I bought you with a price. I glorify him in your mind, your body, and your spirit. Uh, I can just go on and on with scriptures, people, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But, uh, for me, it's been in a journey, uh, from the time I've got saved to where I'm at talking to you guys and, and, and running into uh, Ramon that uh, I was living in Baltimore in the streets of Baltimore, actually, in a row, a row house dating a school teacher. And I was, bro, I mean, tell people I was, I was wild. I was crazy. I was doing drugs on porn, lusting with the eyes, sexing with other women, uh, drinking, partying. Just my mind was just in a total different mindset. Uh, and a guy shared a gospel track with me locally where I lived at and said he prayed for me for over a year. Faithfully, this man called me on the phone every Friday, did not miss a beat. But I didn't understand that God was knocking on my door at that time. And I, I actually went through a hard time in my life. God was knocking on my door. I lost my job, my house, and my girlfriend in one hour. Everything happened for me in threes. Everything happened for me in threes. Well, you say, well, why did it happen in threes, people? And because three is a holy number. Okay. And when this all happened, you know, all I can say is that as I was moving all my clothes out of the row house in Baltimore, the man that gave me that gospel track was in the very last pair of pants of mine. And I pulled it out of my pants and I started reading it. Right. But if you don't know what you're reading, it doesn't comprehend in your brain. But by the grace of God, Jesus had his hand out reaching out to me, loving me at that moment of my life because I called his brother, which lived five minutes down the street from me in Baltimore. And I said, yo, Johnny, I lost my job, lost my job, lost my girl, lost my house. He was like, man, come on in, moved in his house. And I lived there for about two weeks. And it just got even worse for me. As all this happened, I went to a 7-Eleven in right downtown Baltimore, and I walked into the place with Johnny, and, I'm, and, I, and, I, and I tried to get a bottle of water, and I touched the finger on the, uh, the glass door. And as I touched it, I rubbed it in my eye. Well, as I rubbed it in my eye, whatever was on that door got in my eyelids, and it swelled my eyes shut and had white stuff all over my eyes, and my eyes swelled shut. It looked like Mike Tyson had knocked me out in boxing, literally. What do I do? What do I do? I said, man, take me Johnny's freaking out. He's like, what do I do? What do I do? I said, man, take me to Baltimore John Hopkins University. Well, Baltimore John Hopkins University, ladies and gentlemen, is probably the best uh, doctors in the country of the United States of America. Okay. I mean, that's the personal opinion, personal debate, but that's what I know. And an eye specialist looked at my eye for 13 hours. Okay. And sent me home 
with no medication. They told me they don't know if it's viral or bacterial. So now we go back to Johnny's house. This eye swelled shut. I got white stuff all over my eyes, and it's got like a sappy glue to my eye, and whatever was in this eye oozed over in this eye. So now both eyes are swelled shut. Wow. I started getting red bumps all over my arms, all over my body. And Johnny, what do I do? Mm -hmm. he, all I could do was drink water. Well, again, I say by the grace of God before I even knew who God was or knew who the Father was. I wasn't saved, living for the kingdom. Uh, one of my eyes opened up the next day on Sunday, and I drove from Baltimore to my dad's house. One and a half hour drive my dad's house my dad told me to come get penicillin now i wasn't on the up and up with my father at the time i pissed him off i upset him i was very opinionated i was very you know with my language uh it was not good and my relationship was not uh, a whole relationship between a father and a son so I get to his house and I was all excited to get the penicillin. So I took the penicillin for two days. Uh, it was on Wednesday when everything, all my eyes cleared up. I was good to go. So that Friday, the same mm -hmm. calling me on Friday, his name was David. Mm -hmm. Well, you say people, what is it's a coincidence, right? No, 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 no. The word ordained, everything is ordained by the father, everything. So he invited me to on a Friday night. Now, I thought we were going to play basketball on a Friday night like we used to, but I had no idea that I was walking into a revival at a church of 855 people. And as soon as I walked in, Ramon, I tell you what, brother, I said, skirt. I turned around and said, no, I'm not about this. And he's like, no, 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 please come, please. And he sat down and he just started praying. So as I walked into that church, I knew that there was something bigger in this world that I was seeking. There was something I wanted more. Why did girlfriends cheat on me? Why did people lie to me? Why did I lose jobs? Why did, Why were all these things happening in my life as I kept asking myself? And that moment that I walked into that church, I knew Satan was telling me, no, not to raise my hand. I did raise my hand. The men prayed over me as I walked in the middle of the church. I told everybody that I repented of all sins that I could think of at that moment. And I said, God, if you are real, please take me now as a child. Take me right now. And literally, the spirit came in my heart. I walked to the pastor. I grabbed the microphone from the pastor and the evangelist that was in that church. And I looked at 800 people dead in their eyes. And I says, can you burn for God? Die to your flesh. Die to your flesh. Die to your flesh three times. And then I stood at attention and I looked at everybody and I saluted them like that. I walk back over and I hand the microphone to the uh, pastor wow. and they, the whole church was like this stunned. They were like, well, what just happened to this man? Right. And the pastor was like, well, this man just got saved by the blood of Jesus. Walked out the church, hearing out my, out my, out my ears, stop wearing my hat backwards, stop hanging out with all the people I used to hang with, stop smoking weed, stop doing drugs, stop drinking. I stopped doing everything. As the Bible says, second Corinthians five seventeen. As you become a new creature in Christ, all things become new. Amen. You are in a new family, ladies and gentlemen. You're not as the old man. Right. You become a new man right. and a new family, right. new body in Christ. I would say a sanctification in Christ is what it is. Information. Amen. I would say Amen. a so, sanctification you know, you guys, in Christ is what it is. Got a, got a chance to be able to hear a short bit of his testimony. And, I'm, and I already know just by knowing him personally, man, that's just a little bit. But, you know. That's that's what we got to do, brothers and sisters. We got to strive. And the Father says, strive to enter to the gate, you know, that, that narrow path. And, you know, Matthew 5, 48, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. says, strive Matthew, to be perfect. Matthew 5, 48, Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, says, strive Amen. to be perfect like Amen. Christ Amen. Jesus, which Amen. is in so, heaven. He is perfect. He's sinless. He did not. We are fleshly Amen. people striving Amen. to be more Amen. in the image of Christ. That's, that's what we have to do. Um, right here, Luke. Uh, I'm going in the book of Luke, Luke 13, and I'm going to verse 24. Let me know when you you get prepared and you get ready, and we'll we'll jump right into it. But yeah, brothers and sisters, this is definitely a time. I mean, again, I mean, don't 
don't don't take our words lightly. You don't take the words of the most high lightly. I, I'm gonna just put it like that. Do not take the words of the words that are written in red here on Facebook Live and the ones that are uh, going to be seeing this video later on today. Do not take the words in red lightly. Even the ones in black, but the ones in red is the most high speaking. So let's let's hear what he has to say. Luke 13 verse 24. It says, "Strive to enter into the straight gate, for many I will say unto you will seek to enter and shall not." be able shall not be able so you already thinking let's think let's think see the father says strive to enter into the straight gate strive meaning you're going to have to constantly you're going to constantly keep going you're going to constantly keep running you have to run this race that's what striving is or or stretching out you're going to have to strive brother so you're going to reach out so then he says you know i'm going to go ahead and finish this verse out uh luke 13 verse 25 i'm gonna go down to 25 then he says once the master of his house is risen up and have shuttered the door and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. He shall answer and say unto them, I know you not. Depart away from me, ye workers of iniquity. Wow. Wow. Because I look at that like mm. uh, I look that I look at that on the on the on the in the world what we see right now. Mm. We see a lot of people are striving to go through this gate. They're striving to go through that gate. They're striving on their job. They're striving on, at their church house. They're striving to get this car. They're striving to get their credit straight. But are you striving to get through that straight gate? The Father says strive to get through that straight gate, that, that, that narrow path. And that narrow path is going to put you where? Into eternal life. It's going to put you into the kingdom. And that's what we all are striving for. Are we not? So that's what we're seeking for, brother. What you got to do? To, what you got to pick it back on that, brother? Oh, I'm sorry. So, so the flip side of that is you have to ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen, are you? Oh, I'm sorry. So, so the flip side of that is you have to ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen, are you really striving for that? NK, you have to answer that your own self because if if you don't know who you are in Christ, then what are you striving for? Because if you don't know who you are in Christ, I would say you are lost in the ways of the world and you will be deceived. Okay. And Satan will just cling you right up and destroy you. So go ahead and Literally. keep speaking and I'm going to pull up that. Uh, I'm going to try to find that here in my, my Bible dictionary here if I can find it. But go ahead. Keep keep speaking, brother. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we can also talk. uh, uh Okay. That, okay. Yeah. So we can also talk. Uh, uh, go in parallel with that. Uh, Ramon is that that the Bible says in Matthew mm -hmm. seven fourteen. Okay. Let's go to Matthew chapter seven verse fourteen. Okay. And he says, yes. In Matthew seven fourteen, he says, because mm -hmm. straight is the gate and narrow mm -hmm. is the way, life. which leadeth unto life. Right there, life. It leads you to. Life. Yeah. Find it. And yeah. few there be what that find. It. So you got to. Are you striving? So you got to ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen, are you striving? Are your legs propped up on the – are you just chilling like a villain? Are you just chilling? Legs are propped Amen. up. Life is great. Yes. Woohoo! Yeah. Yeah. I'm partying. I got the job. I got the money. You're on that high mountain. You got your wife. You got that nice rock on your finger. You got your prize sitting next to you. But guess what? Are you striving for that straight and narrow gate? Are you striving to be perfect like Christ Jesus, which is in heaven? You got to ask it to yourself. Are you doing 1 Corinthians 6.20? For ye, I, ye, I bought you with the price. The Father bought you with the price as he died on that cross and paid all that penalty for your sins. Yes. Hey, don't take my word for it. Take the red word in the Bible. Take that is what you got to right. pay attention to. Amen. We are just Amen. fleshly people. We will <laughs> you know, return to that's dust. That's why the Father always say, "Test the Spirit by the Spirit." So you, we going you got to you got to test the Spirit by the Spirit. You're gonna have to test in these end times that we're living in, and in the times before me and anybody else, before all of us came on this earth, brothers and sisters, even the ones of old, the disciples of old, they had to test the Spirit by the Spirit. And He says it right here in First John four and one. So First John four and one, it says, "Beloved." Believe not every spirit, but try the spirit where they are of God, because many false prophets are going to come out in the world. And we see many false prophets coming out in the world right now. We have the biggest 
Man, one of the biggest antichrist spirits walking on the planet Earth right now. We love to call that Pope Francis. You know, I, I don't call him Pope Francis. I don't love to call him Pope Francis, but that's what his name is. <laughs> you know, and then we, we start to dabble in it. That's why you got to <laughs> test the spirit by the spirit. But if, you, if you're if you not, how can you even test the spirit by the spirit when you don't even have spiritual discernment? We have to have spiritual discernment in this hour, brothers and sisters. Because, you know, you shall know them by their fruit. So I'm going to keep reading. 1 John 4, 2, hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus, Jesus Christ is to come in the flesh is of God. But then listen to what he says here, 1 John 4, 3, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God, and that is the spirit of the Antichrist. Wherefore, ye have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. <laughs> Already is in the world. Pope Francis just now, a couple of days ago, is changing changing the words in our Father's prayer. Just got done changing uh, one of the. He says he added another commandment to the Ten Commandments. But the Father told you in the Book of Revelations, let no man change the words that are written in this book. And if he does, I'm gonna add to him the plagues that are written in this book. Hmm. I mean, I mean, we 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 are in the times where. <clears throat> There is too much cotton candy preaching going on as it is. There's a lot of cotton candy preaching going on on social media where it's sweet on the outside, but the inside is, ho is hollow. It's full of nothing. You, no meat in it. You're not even getting Amen. full. You're not getting full. You're full of hot air. Brothers and sisters. Amen. I mean, we got to be sealed. And the only me and my brother talked about this today. You're talking about being sealed in your forehead. And he tells you about that in the book of Revelation. But I'm going to let him tag in and I'm going to pull up that scripture and we're going to talk about that. Yeah, let's start. Yeah, tag that, please, please, definitely. Yeah, let's start. Yeah, tag that, please, please, definitely. No, I didn't say anything. You go ahead, and I'm gonna um, pull that scripture. Up. Yeah, what's that, Roman? You said what? Uh, I guess for me, for me, uh, ladies and gentlemen, okay. is true repentance. Uh, I guess for me, for me, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is is true repentance. What is true repentance, people, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, we come today to say that if you are washed by the blood of Jesus, then then you have no sin in your life. No, try again. You got to keep striving every day at this. This is a a the Bible says you have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Okay. Also, the Bible says that you have to what study to show yourself approved to God, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay. And I can also sit here on another topic, Ramon, and show people, ladies and gentlemen, that even we are being deceived in our scriptures and our Bible because Satan has the power of this world to deceive you. And that's what he's doing. He's rocking the whole world like a little baby. Rock my baby. And everybody is spiritually just asleep. They don't have their eyes open. They don't know how to yes. read the Bibles correctly. People are just walking to and fro all over the place. Yes. And it's sad. It breaks my heart. My heart mourns for people. Okay. To yes. hear the truth with people. So you got to say, okay, yes. are you really sealed in your forehead? Yes. So by I'm going to touch on that word repentance. You got the scripture. Let's, let's go there. I, I know a lot of people may say it. They hear it, but do you understand it? So right here, uh, I'm showing it to you guys right here. It's called the handy dictionary of the Bible. Yep. So these are the words that's in the Bible. I'm going to show it here as well. So the word repentance, change of mind and of heart with regard to sin so that there is no turning away. So that is a turning away from sin. You can find this in Matthew 27 and 3. And you can find this in 2 Corinthians 7, 9, and 10. Repentance is striving for salvation. That's true repentance, turning away from it. So... I just want everybody to get that. So I don't want people to leave. I don't want to leave you in error. I don't want you to say that you don't want to know what repentance means. Now you know what repentance means. So right here in the book of Revelations uh, 14, we're going to go to verse 1. When it talks about the lamb and the 144,000. Now I'm going to take my time and I'm going to read line by line, like he says, precept by precept, here a little, there a little. Those are the things that we want to do. So it says, Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the mount, on the mountain, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Revelation fourteen and two. And I heard a voice from heaven, as a voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of the harps harping with their harps. <laughs> Sounds like a song, does it not? 
Mm. Okay, <laughs> Revelation 14 and 3. And they sung as <laughs> no. it were as a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty four thousand which was redeemed from the earth. Now, how can blessing to you, brother uh, uh, Ryan? How can you be redeemed from the earth and be sealed in your foreheads? We're gonna keep reading, and we're gonna we're gonna try to. We, you, we gotta get it. We gotta get it. So let's keep reading. Revelation fourteen and four. These are they that which were not defined with the woman, which we know what the woman is. We know what the, the word woman means. Brother Owens, do you want to tag on that, the word woman? What's woman mean? <laughs> Everybody thinks a woman is a woman. What's woman right. mean? <laughs> Everybody thinks a woman is a woman. What did, what did God create man in the flesh? What did he create man in the flesh for? He created Adam and he created Eve. Okay, in the Bible, one man means a man, means a man according to scripture, a man. It's a man in the flesh. Go ahead. That's where we go wrong. We have divided. That's where we, that's where we go wrong. We, we, we have divided a man and a woman and woman and man are, are basically the same in the scriptures. Okay. That's what people are missing. Then you, now you say, well, right. woman's got rights and a man's got Amen. rights. And then Amen. that's where Amen. we've all so, gone wrong. You know, and we, we find that word uh, woman in, in the Bible a lot. And, uh, you know, it, we, we can find it in certain different passages here, in certain different scripts, scriptures. But we're going to dabble into that later. I don't want to get off topic. So and then it says, so these are they that which were not defined by yeah, women for they are virgins. For they are virgins. These are they that which followed the lamb wheresoever he goes. Wheresoever he goes. So when me and my brother... You know, I, I get an opportunity. I'm preaching the gospel in the streets here on social media and different platforms. But the father says, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. But he also just told you right here, these are them that were redeemed from among men being first fruit unto God and of the lamb. But then I'm going to go back to verse three. I want to get that back into verse three. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. So you got to be the only way that we're going to be redeemed from this earth and enter into the kingdom of the most high God. First and foremost, we're going to have to be sealed in our foreheads with the love of Jesus Christ. That's why he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. There's so many things that he's talking about love in this hour. But we say that, oh, I love my brother, and my sister, or, or we love all these different other things. No, brothers and sisters, come out of her, my people, like he says, so you do not be partakers of her plague. It's in no way possible for you to be able to come out of her when you still love her. And who is her? And you're still in her. Right. No, her. It's, 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 it's impossible. And you're still in her. Right. No, her. You're still, mm. You're, mm. you're still in mm. the church. You're mm. still sitting in the church. The pastor and the Sleeping. Why the pastor, the pastor and the evangelist is playing all this music in you and deceiving your mind and your hearts, people, ladies and gentlemen. And that's where we are in our comfort of our house, reading our Bibles, studying ourselves, okay, our holy Bibles, okay, preaching the truth. And that's why people don't want the truth in those churches in the end of times, because why? It convicts them. They don't want to change their way. Is because Paul, okay, his whole ministry in the New Testament was speaking against that and told them to come out amongst everybody and be ye separate than the world. That's what that means. How can you be just like the world, dress like the world, talk like the world, and do everything the world does and try to be different at the same time? Ain't going to happen. But when the Father right, says follow, you know, he was saying follow, follow me. He want us to follow him. <laughs> And the only way, oh man, hear, hear, hear this. If you don't get nothing out of this whole message, right. just listen to what he says in this passage. The only way that we're going to be able to, to follow the Messiah, right? And before the second coming of, of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the only way we're going to be able to follow him from this earth and be redeemed, when he says 144,000 be redeemed from this earth to enter into the kingdom. Look at what he says in Revelation 3 and 4. He says, thou has a few names, even in Syria, which not have defined their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. For they are worthy. So it's impossible 
for you to be able to say I'm finna go, I'm going home when you know you still got spots on your mm -hmm. garment. So then you're not in white, so you're not worthy to enter the kingdom of the Most High God. That's what he's saying. Yes, yes, brother, yes. I mean, how you can't, you can't, you can't mix that understanding yes. up right now. Yes, brother, says, yes. They have not defied, defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Wow, for they are worthy. So, so and then I got one more to piggyback off of that. Revelation seven. <laughs> 15 through 7. Therefore, are they before the throne of God and strive him, I mean, serve him day and night in his temple? And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Then he says, They shall hunger no more, neither thirst no more, neither shall the son of them or, ne or uh, no, the son of the light of them nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. Hallelujah, man. You, you hear that? You, you, I mean, the, the Most High God is so, so full of grace, so full of mercy. Where he says, For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto the living fountains of water, people. Of God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. That's when we're leaving this. This world that is going through the LGBT community. We leave it through this world that's going through all this hell and all these different things. And now you're being redeemed. Now you're being sealed in your forehead. And then when you leave this planet, there is no more guilt. There's no more shame. There's no more lusting. There's no more all these things that are keeping, that's full of sin that is keeping you in bondage. All these things are done away with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'm preaching myself happy over here, man. Go ahead. Uh... Yeah, Ramon, uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Uh, uh, says, yeah, Ramon, uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 mm -hmm. uh, says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Father. Though your sins be scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the bride of Christ from your head to your feet. And like he was saying, we have to be what? Striving to get these spots that are off our bodies because we are called to be pure as white as snow. Any man that tells you that you cannot be perfect in Christ Jesus is a liar, is the straight liar. I don't listen to what they say. I pay attention to what scripture says. And scripture backs that up, that if you look in the Hebrew word, what the word perfect means, it means complete. I am complete man of God in Christ Jesus. Am I perfect? In my flesh? No, sir. I'm not saying that, ladies and gentlemen. What I'm trying to say is that in the spiritual realm does not exist with the the earthly world. It, it just don't, Amen. these two do not exist together. Amen. Hey, and if, that's what people are you, missing as well. Follow, if we're talking about, today we're talking about following the Messiah, man. I'm talking about literally following the Messiah. We ain't talking about kicking our feet up on the, right. on the couch just chilling. We can't be chilling. I mean, I mean, it's time out for chilling. I'm 32. I think I've been chilling for about, I would say, 22, 23 years. Yeah, I've been chilling for about 23 years. Been chilling too long. A lot of us have been chilling way too long. I'm seeing elders 50, 60, 70 years old <laughs> still chilling. Still chilling. Like, we don't have no time for that. So look what he says right here, John 8 and 12. This is about following the Messiah again. I know I'm running on you, bro. I'm running on you. I got this computer is like sitting right here in front of me. So, John you eight. Know, I, if I wasn't on the, all the, the, the Zoom right now, you already know. You know, I. Phone app right yeah. Right if I wasn't yeah, on the, all yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the Zoom we'll right now, you already know I got my phone app whenever I can run with you. All right. So, quick. John eight and twelve. Then speak. Jesus said unto them, saying, what? "I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in the darkness, but shall have the light of life." <laughs> So when you fall in the Messiah, so when you fall in the Messiah, Ooh. right, and you follow in Christ in this dark world, you're going to, you, but you shall have the light of life. So if you're going to follow the Messiah in this dark world, right, you're going to have the light of life. So Father said right here, I'm going to read that one more time. John 8 and 12. I am the light of the world. He that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And that's found in John 8 verse 12. 
Hey, let's go parallels. Keep going with that. John 14, 27. Hmm. John. Hey, let's go parallels. Keep going with that. John 14, 27. John, John, Jesus yeah. said to you, he said, I come to give you peace that the world can't give you. That's the everlasting peace, people. That is everlasting, which goes in parallel to what you just said. Yeah. Jesus is the light of life, okay? And he's he's living in our hearts. So anything that comes in this world, okay, that comes in our path, yeah. cannot destroy the peace that he's given us in our hearts. It won't it will not break us. It should not break Amen. you. Because if it does Amen. break you, Amen. then that's a whole other topic. Brothers and sisters, man. <laughs> it, I, I, I know a lot of people just, a lot of people don't pick this up no more. Yes. A lot of people really don't pick these up anymore, and it's sad that we live in a society and we live in a world where the Bible has became taboo, where it has became another book that you see books behind me that's full of dust, but mine are not. I'm just saying books are just behind people that are just full of dust. So, again, we are following the Messiah in this hour. That's what we're doing. Me, me, my brother, we fellowship when we're not doing this. We're following the Messiah, and I'm going to keep reading. So, Revelation 17 Verse 14, these shall make, these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And they that are with him are called and, and they are called and chosen and faithful. So you're going to be called, you're going to be chosen and you're going to be faithful when you're following Christ. You're going to be called out of the what? Out of the world, right? Right. You're going to be faithful unto who? Unto Christ, not unto man, not unto the world, but unto Christ. And then you're going to be what? Chosen. Chosen by who? Chosen by Yeshua. Chosen by Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. When you're following him. But when you got to follow, you got to want to follow. See, that's one thing I, I, I learned early when I was a young man. Salvation, like he said, salvation is free. The Father's not going to make you... He's not going to throw the Bible at you and say, go read my word. He's not going to tell you to go this way, go that way. He's going to let you go. He's going to let you go. But in time, you'll line up or you'll be like some of these atheists that claim to be atheists, but in all reality, they're really not. They're just confused. So, you know, there's a lot of people out here that just, you know, it's, it's time to wake up, brothers and sisters. It truly is. This is not about poking at anybody. This is this righteous judgment with the word to have an understanding that we need to be following Christ in this hour. Plain and simple. I mean, the things that we're talking about ain't finna get you hooping and hollering. It's gonna make you challenge that psyche. It's gonna challenge that mind. Today is all about challenging the mind, so then the body is gonna follow. But the body ain't gonna follow the mind when the mind is still stuck on La La Land and got your feet up, waiting on the sand to come in so you can feel good on vacation. It's time out for being on vacation in this hour. Go ahead, brother. Hey, what, what, what is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what's the Bible say? About, hey, what, um, what, what is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what's the Bible say Hebrews. about the word, the word of God? It says in Hebrews, okay, chapter 4, verse 12, it says, For the word of God is quicker, powerful, two edged sword. Okay, piercing even to the dividing and asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the morrows and the discerner of the thoughts and in and, and the intentions of the heart. OK, and that's what the word of God is supposed to do, ladies and gentlemen, it's supposed to be like a wound that's on your body. It gets in that wound okay? and it heals it forever, forever, people. Okay? But if you go to the doctors, OK, what do they normally do? They give you a bunch of medications. OK, and does it ever fix the problem forever? No, sir. So that, ladies and gentlemen, there's only one thing in this world that will Amen. ever give you Amen. forever eternal Amen. is the, the word, word of God. God. The word of God is, is literally nourishment to the bones. Well, I mean, when you're, when you're down and out, man, when you're down and out, you're tired, you're like, man, I can't go no more. Go get in the word. Get in, look, let's, look at this book right here. Look, look at this book. This book is called Praying in the Book of Proverbs. Praying in the book of Proverbs. I read this every day. There is so much meat in this book. And believe it or not, reading out of the book of Proverbs will teach you how to pray. Edifying your body. Go ahead. Careful. 
Hey, care careful, careful, Ramon. Careful now, man. Some churches now will tell you. Church organizations will say, "Hey, sadly, mistaking that this is outside still part the Bible, of the whatever is not good you know, for you." You know, I, I I don't have time, man, to 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 bicker to uh, argue against the word because <laughs> right. it's necessary to do that. That's why the Father says, "Cast no pearls against swine." I ain't cast no pearls against no swine, man. I'm not doing it. It's impossible. Right. But today is the day, brothers and sisters. We is, time is getting ready to run out on right. our live broadcast. But today is the day for repentance and salvation. Today is the day to find the edifying words that are in Christ, which is the whole book from Genesis to Revelations, to find your place in your walk right now to be sealed by the Most High God right now. Because the Messiah, is what I'm learning is, in, in reading the book of Revelation, reading Daniel, the Messiah is not coming back until his people, his chosen people, are sealed in their foreheads, brothers and sisters. Plain and simple. So we look at a lot of these things going on in the world, and this topic is for another video, but we look at a lot of things that's going on in the world, and we say, well, I'm ready for Christ to come back. I'm ready to go home. Are you truly ready? No, you're truly not. You're really not. We're really not ready. And I just gave you a couple of passages, and I will, I will tag the, 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 uh, the, the Bible scriptures in the comments down below, and I'm sure Owens will jump on that as well, but this is the hour, yeah. brothers and sisters, to truly know exactly who you are in Christ and then walk yeah, well, in it daily and follow him. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, uh, I want to leave everybody with this uh, before we jump off here, okay? John chapter 15. Yeah, uh, I want to leave everybody with this uh, before we jump off here, okay? John chapter 15 to close everything. John chapter 15, Amen. okay, starting at verse 7 all the way down to verse 14. He said, if ye, if ye abide in me... And my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall ye be made my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Amen. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love, as I've spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be in full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man may lay his own life down for his friends. You are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you, ladies and gentlemen, I love you. I don't know you. Whoever's watching this podcast from from Europe to Japan, anywhere around the world, Jesus Christ is the only hope that this whole world has. We don't have much time, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. The Bible tells us that. Could it be your day? Could it be my day? Could it be Ramon's day? No man knows that. So if you don't have the real father of Jesus Christ in you, I pray that you will seek him wholeheartedly and ask for him to come in your heart today. Because today is the salvation of Jesus Christ today. We can't make it no plainer than that. It was like, we like the word says, man. It's, and I said so much, it's time out for wasting time. So I'm going to just leave us with a prayer and we're just going to go ahead and finish this broadcast. Dear Heavenly Father, humbly one more time Lord the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings the true Elohim Father we thank you for every single thing we thank you for the opportunity bit that you give us that you've given us right now in this present moment Father to be able to fellowship among the brethren right now Lord just to say thank you for every single thing that you do come into all our lives Father strengthen us in our walk let us find the power and seek the great glory which is in your word that we can find more peace that we can find tranquility father that we can find everything that we need in this hour in your word we know that you're soon to come back father and we're tired a lot of us are tired of playing church a lot of us are tired of wasting your time father. we want to be about your business in this hour so we thank you for i thank you for my brother owens lord i thank you for every single thing that you're doing for me like continue to be edifying him to to all our lives. I thank you for everything that you for me and to listen to this broadcast right now. Strengthen their life, make them more stronger in this hour. Let them have
have an ear to hear, eyes to see, to be able to see the time to be. In your name is sure, but she out there. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Always a blessing, man, to be a love fellowship, brother. Thank you. If it's not for him with me, I'm going to definitely be trying to get some Bible studies going on, brothers and sisters. I mean, it's nothing to download a Zoom a Zoom app. It's nothing to download these certain apps to be able to edify the kingdom. You know, it's a lot of us downloading unnecessary things that we really shouldn't be doing. And I say it so much. It does not help you to strive into the kingdom even more than why are you wasting your time. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, Shalom, shalom. And you know what that means. Peace. The king is coming.